Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is a follow on video from the previous video I've just released with the C152 doing a manual ILS approach. In this video I'm going to show you how you can do this in the C172, Cessna 172 with the glass cockpit displays like this. Slightly different how we set this up but the principles are pretty similar. So let's not hesitate. Let's get on with the video. So just in case you've not seen the previous video I've done, let's do this from the start. We're on the main menu in Flight Simulator. I'm on PC again, but this will work fine on Xbox as well. In the search bar here, if you're going to follow this tutorial, type in KDEN. We'll start off from the same location. That will take us to Denver International Airport. That's the airport we're going to land at but we won't set up anything here. Just scroll out a little bit until you can see Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport. Click on that, zoom to details, and we'll set off flying towards Denver International again. So same thing, runway 12, 12 left, or one two left, set as departure. Now, at the time of recording this, it's just about twilight, maybe coming into dawn over Denver. So I'm going to adjust the time to make it more daylight. And flight conditions I'm going to have on scattered clouds. Highly recommend scattered clouds or clear skies if you're learning the principles on how to do this. Another thing I'm going to do here, something somebody mentioned, a couple of people mentioned on the previous video. Now, with the last video, I showed you that I went to Google, typed in KDEN ILS frequencies to find the frequency of one of the runways here, runway 8. You can actually do this thanks to a couple of my members, or a couple of my subscribers who mentioned this in Flight Simulator itself. At the bottom here, you've got different options. If you go to the more option, press that. And go to show lens, show lens, uh, sorry, open filters. So F or open filters. Scroll down in this menu and where you see navigation and nav aids, turn that on. Then we can close that box. If we now scroll in over Denver, instead of going to Google or an external program, we can click on this box here, on runway 8 here. And actually, you know, click on the box here, that would be better. So next to the runway you want to land at, it will give you the ILS frequency here. Thanks to Wombleway, Dave, for telling me that, and Russin also mentioned that in that previous video. So thanks you two. <laughs> I never knew you could do this in Flight Simulator until you mentioned it in the comments. So there you go, the community has come up trumps again. So make a note of that frequency, 108.90. Uh, Today, instead of the, the 172, we'll be flying the Cessna 1... Sorry, instead of the 152, we'll be flying the Cessna 172 Skyhawk with the G1000, the glass cockpit display. Ensure you choose an aircraft that has the G1000. You can even do the Grand Caravan and other aircraft if you prefer. But if you're going to follow this tutorial, choose the 172 with the uh, G1000. Any livery will do. So with that all set up, we've, all we've done is set up a departure airport. Don't select arrival airport here, just your departure at runway 12 left at Metropolitan Airport here. And let's go fly. And we're all nicely set up at our departure airport, Rocky Mountain Metropolitan. If for whatever reason it doesn't load you in in daylight, I would recommend daylight for your first couple of goals at this if you're practicing this. 
just alter the time here. I had to, it loaded me in at night time, but never mind. Let's get into the cockpit. And I'm going to come down to the left G1000. There's a couple of things I want to go over here. Now, I still have my radio panel up and working. If you watch this nav frequency change, move the mouse out of the way and I'll twiddle the knobs on the radio panel. I've got that all set up, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the knobs here manually to show that you don't need the radio panel to do this. I'll link the video I did about the radio panel in the top right, but you don't need it to set these NAV frequencies. I'm going to do this manually. So if you remember, this is our standby frequency. That's our active frequency on NAV1, and that's our standby on NAV2 and our active on NAV2. It's NAV1 we're going to pay attention to here, the top one. So on the standby, I'm going to move this uh, knob here, this uh, dial here, and put this to our frequency of 108, if you remember, hope you made a note of this, 108.90, and that's the frequency, ILS frequency to land at runway 8 at Denver International. I'm going to press this button here to swap it to active. Nothing will happen yet, but now that's our active frequency in our NAV1. 108.90. Let me just zoom in a little bit here. Another thing here, by default, you should have GPS showing in this little sort of digital readout here. On our compass kind of thing here. If you press the CDI button down here, it will change it to localizer 1, which is essentially our NAV1 frequency. I'm going to show you this when we get closer. Nothing's going to be active yet because we're too far away from that frequency. You can see that's now highlighted in green because we're in localizer 1. If I press that CDI button again, by the way, it will go to localizer 2. If we had a frequency set up there, that's the one that we'll be following and chasing. But we're not. We're chasing localizer 1. So that's how it is at de default with GPS showing here. Just press your CDI button and with that frequency active in your NAV1, that's the one that we should be locking onto when we get closer to it. So let's not hesitate any longer. Let's throttle up, release the parking brake. Similar to what we did in the last video, we're just going to take off the airport direction, our destination airport direction, is towards the east. So when we take off, I'll bank to the left slightly. I've got no flaps set by default in the Cessna 172, so that's fine. Get to just over 60 knots there. Take off. And I'm going to trim up and leave it in a climbing position because we want to get... I mean, that's... A good readout for you. We want to get to around 8,000 feet. We're already far over 5,500 feet above sea level at that airport. But I want to climb to around 8,000 feet for the localizer. And I'll show you that when this becomes active. When it does become active, I'm just banking to the left slightly like I mentioned before. When it does become active, let me just trim up. I'll active pause the sim and then explain what we need to do to follow uh, a manual ILS with the G1000. So there we go, that heading should be okay. I'll keep it, keep it in a climb, a decent climb configuration. It does like to level out a bit this aircraft. Generally, I'll talk about this more later, but I find this easier to do in the Cessna 172 than the 152. And actually, you know, the Cessna 172 is actually one of my favourite aircraft of all time. Must release a video on that and my top five favourite aircraft over any flight sim of all time over the past 40 years. That should be quite a good video, video to do keep meaning to do that, let me know if you're interested down below. So at any moment now we should get we should, this localizer, the ILS, no, it's become active now. I'm going to active pause the simulator so I'm not moving even though the world around me is moving. If there were cars you'll see them. Uh, we don't see any yet but that doesn't mind. That doesn't 
matter, rather. So let's come down to this left G1000 and explain what we're going to have to do, similar to the Cessna 152 with the analog dial. Similar, but slightly different. This is our horizontal bearing line. So you can see we're to the left, or the line is to the right of us currently. What I want to do, I want to get this green line to join in with these other two green lines here to form one solid green line with that arrow pointing directly in front of me, ideally. That means we will have a perfect approach to our runway. We'll be on a perfect heading, at least, to our runway. So what I'll do, I'll unpause the sim, bank to the right and get that green line here to join in with these and have that arrow pointing as, as best as possible northward, or upwards rather, directly in front of me, which means we'll have a perfect bearing to our runway. Slightly different here is that we have a glide slope diamond. Now when we get to around 8,000 feet or so, that diamond will start to move down to the centre. When it starts to move down, I'm going to throttle back and I'm going to try and keep the diamond like you would do in an autopilot ILS. I'm going to try and keep the diamond in the centre where this yellow line is here. If I keep it in the centre, it means I'm at a perfect altitude for the ILS. If I get that line to the centre, it means I'm on a perfect approach. That's the theory. Let's unpause the sim. And already, when I do that, it wants to level out. But I'm just going to keep it in a climb configuration. Bank to our right slightly to get that green line moving towards us. Remember, we want that green line, this arrow here, pointing upwards directly in front of us as best as possible so I'm not going to over bank I'm going to bank to the right a little bit and watch that green line come into me which it should do any moment <clears throat> absolutely beautiful area Denver I must do a flight some kind of video around this area maybe an exploration video it's a lovely area I want to explore it more Denver, it looks absolutely stunning in the sim. Look at it. Incredible. Okay, concentrate that green line's moving into us. I almost didn't catch that. It's moving now to the center. So I'm going to bank to the left to get that arrow pointing directly upwards. Or vertical. There we go. And that's our airport. I can see the runway flashing in front of us. So we're on a good line. I can see that. Just going to come slightly to the right to get that green line fully centred. So like joined up with these other green lines here. That will do. And that green line should start to move fully centre. Like I said, this should work in something like the Grand Caravan or other aircraft that have the G1000 or digital glass cockpits like this. As long as you have the ability to get a lock one up here, a localizer one reading, should work with any air aircraft with the glass cockpit. So there you go. A green line's near. Okay, a bit to the right there. Let it come in a little bit more to get it fully centred. Still a little bit tricky. It's a lot, bit of work for you to do, but not nearly as much as with the 152 I find. I find the 172 is a little bit more assistive. Well, ass assists you a little bit better with uh, procedures like this. There you go. That's not too bad. Like I said, I can see the runway flashing in front of me a little bit. That's the uh, localizer that we're locked onto, so it will highlight the runway for you as well, which is nice. Now it's just a matter of climbing and watching that diamond come down. We're already, what are we, 77, 78 knots? We're already in flaps 1 configuration, but I'm not going to go to flaps 1 yet. You can see we're still 13 nautical miles out. And remember, like the last video, if you're practicing this, turn the point of interest in, a, in assistant options there. Point of interest turn your airport markers on so you can see how far the airport is away from you and you can, you can clearly see where the airport is from the marker so you know you're going in the right direction when you become more practiced at these kind of procedures then you can turn the airport markers off 
So we're just going to wait for that green diamond to start moving down. By the way, I'll mention it here as well. I'm getting very close now to 10,000 subscribers. I will do an ad hoc live stream. I'll put some information up soon in Discord and my channel page. And I'll try and put a notification in YouTube for when I do it a few hours beforehand. 10,000 subs live stream and a couple of uh, interesting giveaways in that as well. So do join in when that happens. Should be very soon now. See the diamond moving down. I'm going to throttle back. You can see that diamond moving down to center. I'm going to throttle back so I'm not climbing. I'm going to try and keep that diamond, follow it, and keep it in the center here where that yellow line is. And how far are we? I don't want to go to Flaps 1 quite yet. A bit, Still a bit too far out from the runway for my liking. I'm just going to throttle back a little bit more though. So the nose of the aircraft will drop. And when that diamond starts to come down to centre, I want to keep it there. Be careful with your throttle. It's very sensitive. If you overcompensate with your throttle, then you, you know, you start to go a bit skew whiffy. Now at this point, I'm not going to do it in this video, but if you were lazy, you can even click autopilot and approach and the aircraft will follow that nav perfectly. Sorry, that uh, ILS perfectly down for a, a perfect landing take over when you're on the runway that will defeat the purpose of this video of course we want to do a manual ILS so I'm going to follow that diamond it's come below me now so I'm going to throttle back more just being a little bit careful with the throttle that I don't overcompensate and start to uh, descend too much but I want to descend certainly a little bit more than I am now because you can see that diamond moving below us further yeah and this is where the concentration comes in. You really have to follow that diamond down. I even want to bank to my left a little bit to get that line here. Back to the centre more. A little bit cloudy, but that's perfect conditions for this kind of approach. And the cloud will clear when we get near the runway. Like I said, do practice this on scattered clouds or clear skies first. Especially if it's your first time doing it, then you can go to live weather. Goodness knows what. Gonna have to come down more. That green diamond is well below us. I will soon go to flaps one. Okay, a little bit more. Should start coming up soon, that green diamond. As I'm descending rapidly. I'm going to go to flaps 1 now because I don't want my aircraft to overspeed and go past that flaps 1 speed. And I can control this a little bit better with flaps. Now, I don't want to descend that much. That diamond will definitely start to come back up now. There you go, you can see it rising slightly. Just going to control the throttle because I do need to keep descending to get that diamond back in the centre perfect line to the airport not the perfect altitude so bring that throttle back gently gently that diamond is now starting to go back up increase that throttle a tiny smudge there that there is the perfect approach and perfect altitude whether it stays there another thing entirely it takes a bit of practice this and with a bit of practice you get better and better just need to increase a little bit more throttle the diamond's starting to go above me now so if it's above you increase the throttle if it's below you the diamond if it's below that line there that yellow line decrease so i need to increase just to raise my altitude or so I don't descend too rapidly rather I want to keep descending towards the runway but not that rapidly if you increase the throttle essentially essentially <laughs> you meant to uh, descend less now I've come off the line as well so the diamond's coming down but I've come off that vertical line uh, heading rather 
So I'm just banking to the right slightly and then back to the left. It's not easy. Unless you're a real expert at this, it's going to be extremely difficult to keep that diamond right in the centre there. But do your best. As long as it's near the centre, then you've got a good approach. So you don't have to have it absolutely perfect. But do try for that perfect approach if you can. There you go. I'm back towards it now. That perfect approach. It's lovely. Lovely sense of accomplishment. You can do this at any time in your flight. Something I may do, and people have been asking for another Around the World video that I did last one I did was ages ago but I may incorporate something like this into my one of my around the world videos maybe full auto, uh, autopilot for part of the flight and then a manual ILS landing at the end of it maybe that should be fun to do so there you go see the runway quite clearly now in front of me and at this point I'm still going to try and follow. Let's decrease now. Still going to try and follow that ILS. Can be. I'm going to go to flaps two as well. Stage two flaps. Just be careful there at the amount I'm descending because that diamond will start to move up and I'll be below. It's better to be above the glide slope than below it. Now it's coming back to centre. Not too bad, maybe not absolutely perfect, but I'm fairly happy with that. Descend. Being buffeted about by the wind there, but that's okay. There we go, diamond's coming back up now. When you get closer, that diamond becomes a little bit more twitchy as well, keep that in mind. And now I've got the runway right in front of me. I'm just going to go for a landing now. That's fine, I've made it. And I've followed the ILS pretty much for the majority of the way there. So let's just try and complete the... Oh, don't want to crash into those uh, lights at the beginning of the runway there. Let's just try and do a nice smooth landing with my Logitech flight yoke. That will do. Raise my flaps. Come to a complete stop. And parking brake on. And outside we go. So there you go. That's how you perform an ILS landing with the G1000 or glass cockpit displays. Let me know your thoughts. If it's been helpful, give the video a like. Subscribe for more, many more flight simulator videos on their way. And I'll see you soon.